Dear students, welcome and thank you for tuning in. We are continuing our discussion about product architecture, which is part of the product design development course. In this video, I'm going to talk more about modular and integral architectures. How are they different? And I'll give some examples. And then we're going to discuss how can we choose between these two architectures. If you remember from the last video, we talked about two types of architectures. One of them is called modular and um, one of them is integral. For the modular architectures, they have some characteristics. For example, if you remember, we talked about chunks, which are parts or uh, components of a product that perform a specific function or task. The assembly of multiple chunks will create our product. In the modular product architecture, each chunk should implement one or very few uh, functional entirely. And there is a reason for that. Also, the interaction between chunks is well defined. Each chunk should have a distinct functionality and there should be a distinct input and outputs from that chunk to other chunks in our product. Also, the modular architecture has advantages in simplicity because each chunk does a specific function. So it's simple to understand and simple to assemble. Also, reusability for product families or platform so if we have chunks they are um, universal among multiple products we can use them from one product to another if we have a problem in one of the chunks we know what the problem is because it's one function we can replace that chunk completely without affecting any of the other chunks that assemble that comp that uh, compose or that creates uh, the product itself some of the examples for uh, such uh, for such pro for product they have uh, modular architecture is the Swiss army knife and this is the simplest uh, function because you see that each uh, component or element uh, of the Swiss army knife performs a specific function if we want to replace this uh, let's say um, or the, if you want to replace the scissor uh, we can just replace that scissor without affecting any other parts of the Swiss uh, army knife also this Sony Walkman it's a very simple uh, product that has uh, multiple chunks this is the headphone and there's if you would want to look uh, into more details you have the case and you have things inside it and this let me show you a, a picture of the internal structure of the sony walkman that identify and clarify what do we mean by modular architecture where every uh, piece of that sony walkman is a chunk so this is the uh, internal structure you can see you have the casing you have the uh, board and you have all these circuitry and where the place that you put your cassette and the case for the cassette so this is a, an example of a modular uh, product where each part is independent has a specific function one or two functions and if we want to replace any of them we can replace it uh, quickly so simplicity is the key the other example or the other uh, type of architecture is integral architecture and in integral architecture uh, functional elements are implemented by multiple chunks or chunks may implement many functions and if you remember um, the example that we showed before in the previous video that has the uh, trailer example uh, so this is the simplest uh, modular architecture and this is how it looks like if it's integral architecture so I have a lot of chunks perform functions uh, and also I have fun uh, Chunks perform multiple functions and I have fun mu functions multi uh, performed by multiple chunks. This is what we mean by that. Now, for the integral, the, the characteristics of the integral uh, product or the uh, product with an integral architecture uh, is that integration interaction between chunks are poorly defined and the integral uh, architecture generally increases performance. Why we, that's why we are using it and reduces cost for any specific product because you have chunks that they can perform multiple tasks and uh, tasks that can be performed by multiple chunks collectively. So this will improve the performance and reduce the cost. Some of the examples, this is a high performance wheel. You can see that the design of the wheel is very, very precise because each part of it, um, the, it, it integrates with other parts uh, and add to the functionality of other parts. Also the compact camera, it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, space is limited and want to make it the smaller smallest uh, this, as small as possible so a lot of uh, parts need to be um, you know a lot of chunks or parts of the product need to perform multiple tasks uh, so for example the casing now you can see that the flash is part of the casing 
and uh, that goes inside and outside. So the space is very compact. Again, when we look at the integral product architecture, this should be an advanced product and the, where performance is key and we want to reduce the manufacturing cost as much as possible. Now, how can you pick between integral and uh, modular architecture? So to choose between the two um, different uh, types of architecture, so the decision should be based on multiple uh, factors and you need to um, you need to know how to divide the product into chunks and also how much modularity to impose um, on how their modules are in interacting with each other and how they are linked to each other. So we have this category, this list. So the first list is you know, the way, the things that will affect your decision of which one, which kind of architecture to use. And the first thing is product change. So if you want to be able to change your product or have some modification to your product, people will go with modular architecture more because this will, uh, every uh, chunk has its own function. We know the functionality, it's simple. If you want to replace it, you take it out and put something uh, in the place of it. So chunks are physically building blocks of the product, but the architecture of the product uh, defines how these blocks relate to the functionality of the product. And then that's where you need to be uh, very careful about how uh, when when it how to what's motivates uh, change for your product and if there's a lot of changes that could happen you need to look carefully into the modular uh, architecture for example if you're thinking of upgrades add-ons uh, adaptations wear consumption flexibility in use and reuse all of these are uh, things that promote change and you need to be very, to be very careful when uh, you are uh, designing your product to have it as modular as possible to accommodate for all these uh, changes. Another, uh, so the copier toner is something that you change and when you design that it should be a modular standalone functionality. Camera lenses also, they're just part of your camera. They should be easily placed and removed. And that's when we design copier toner and camera lenses, we think of modular. Um, architecture. The other point is product variety and uh, you need to look into, so variety refers to the range of product uh, models the firm can produce within a particular time or period of time depending on the demand and the more uh, the, we need to have um, it, the, if, if you have a mo uh, the easy, more varieties will add a lot of complexity to the manufacturing so you need to be very careful when you look at this. So combination, it's, it's, it's very uh, important to understand that if you want to allow variety in your uh, products, uh, this will affect your uh, manufacturing and it affects how modular or integral your uh, product should be. For example, computers, you can, you can have a lot of different um, varieties of computers based if you ha but you need to have a motherboard which is a standard uh, case a standard um, chunks and you build on those chunks swatch let's say for example swatch products the watches um, they have a lot of varieties of watches but if you break it down it's, it's just a component and chunks that they can be replaced so it's it's also uh, very important to look at the in the swatch product that it's much more modular than integral um, because each part can be replaced on its own. Another uh, fa factor you need to look at is um, component standardization. And when you talk about standardization is the use of the same component or chunk in multiple products. So if, it's, if each chunk implements only one of you or a few uh, function elements, then it can be standardized and used in several different products. This is very important, it's very useful. Um, and also you can, make a lot of these products so the volume will be higher because they are chunk they are independent chunks that perform a specific task so in in motors there's a lot of you know add-ons and bearings and the fasteners that they can be uh, standardized and they can be used over and over and over in multiple uh, models and mul a variety of the products that you're using so let's keep that in mind as well also, the product performance is a, another factor that we need to uh, keep in mind when we look at architecture. And in performance, this is where uh, integral uh, architecture is advantageous over uh, modular architecture. 
So product performance uh, it def tells us how well a product implements its intended function. And the, some of the characteristics for the performance are speed, efficiency, accuracy, and noise. And uh, so it, it, we need to optimize our product, the holistic performance of our product. And this can be driven by the size, shape, mass of the product and other, other uh, metrics for our product. So the, you need to keep in mind when you look at uh, you know, racing bikes and fighter, fighter planes, uh, you need to um, think more in an integral architecture rather than the modular architecture. I hope that is, this is clear because you need to comp you're confined with the space and with the weight and you need to have a lot of, uh, you know, to have a, one of your chunks that perform as many functions as possible. So that's, that's very important when you look at the, which kind of design you need to use. Uh, also, which kind of architecture you need to use. Also, the manufacturing cost is very important. And this is another uh, point or factor that uh, makes us go toward integral uh, architecture rather than modular architecture because we want to reduce the cost. So we need to have as, as few uh, parts as possible and that would reduce our cost. And this is something we call uh, component integration. Again, if you want to, you know, build something related to performance and, you know, you need to reduce the cost of manufacturing, you need to go to integral rather than modular uh, architecture. And then the last thing is the project management, and that's important. And so if you are doing, I, I like modular uh, architectures. So if you uh, product with modular architecture, so if you uh, use a modular architecture, you have a simple, simple um, design a problem where you know a person or a small group of people would be focusing on one of the chunks and they will design that chunk and that will be independent and you can standardize that and everybody will be happy now if you are designing um, if you are part of a, a team that is doing integral architectures so coordination between the groups is important so if you are creating a chunk and that that multi, that functions and do multiple Fun, uh, tasks for other chunks you need to have good coordination and uh, communication with the other teams to make sure that your product is working well and at the end system engineering you have to be able to decompose and integrate and that's part also from the project management uh, so all of these factors you need to put them in consideration for your project so you need to think with your team about your project how do you want to uh, decide which uh, of these two different architectural um, um, definition or architectural models you want to take uh, and use for your product and implement. Uh, we're going to talk more about the method for um, implementing this and choosing these uh, but for now I hope that this is clear and um, give you an idea what are the things that you need to think about to decide which kind of uh, architectural modality or model you're going to use for your product. Thank you until next video. Bye.